The animated version of Pinocchio by Guillermo del Toro is coming to Netflix soon, and let's just say, there's a lot to say about the movie and the story behind it. We've been pretty impatient and have waited for a long time to finally see what del Toro has in store for us, especially since this is one of his passion projects. Let's look at Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio Explained. To start with, Guillermo del Toro has raised the bar. Hey, remember the first iconic movie of Pinocchio that came out when we were kids? Well, this definitely takes everything to a whole new level. Ever since the original story came out in 1883, Pinocchio has become a pretty well-known character, and the story of the puppet who wants to be a real boy has been retold in many different ways. Disney's 1940 Pinocchio movie is one of the best best well-known versions and in 2022 a live-action version of that movie will be made. But this version was panned by critics. Many of them compared it to Guillermo del Toro's upcoming Netflix version and said that del Toro's vision is much more creative and exciting. After years of work, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio has a lot to live up to when it finally comes out. From the trailer and behind-the-scenes footage for Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, it's clear that the movie is much more creative than some other versions. Versions. This shouldn't come as a surprise since the director's movies are full of magical worlds and moments. Guillermo del Toro has already made movies like Pan's Labyrinth, Hellboy, The Shape of Water, and a lot more, but this one is kind of different. You see, it took a long time for Pinocchio to come out because it was his passion project. Pinocchio is definitely a project of a lifetime, and he'd honestly suggest you guys to book your calendars because you're in for a ride. Coming up, this movie has been in the works for 14 years. In 2008, Guillermo del Toro said his new and upcoming movie would be a stop-motion version of Pinocchio. The film's production house was put on hold because of problems with with At the Mountains of Madness and Del Toro's work on Pacific Rim, but this was just the first of many delays for Pinocchio. In 2011, it was announced that the children's book author Grizz Grimley and stop-motion animator Mark Gustafsson would direct Pinocchio from a script written by Del Toro. The movie would be heavily based on Grimley's 2002 Pinocchio book, which is something that is still present in the final film. Everything was going well until just a few years later, Pinocchio got stuck in development hell and was pushed aside by Del Toro's other projects that were more real and marketable. People thought Pinocchio was dead for years because they hadn't heard anything about it, just like all of Del Toro's other failed projects. Then again, in 2017, a new script for Pinocchio was announced, but this time Del Toro was scared the movie would get canceled because of high costs, which it sadly did. After almost a year of no studios being willing to fund Pinocchio, Netflix brought the movie back to life and gave Del Toro the $35 million budget he wanted. Finally, in 2020, they started filming and making the music for the movie. Just like a lot of things that had to be put on hold, the COVID-19 pandemic delayed everything. Thankfully, now, after 14 years of work, it's finally coming out. Followed by Why Pinocchio is a Passion Project for Del Toro. It's pretty obvious Guillermo Del Toro is very passionate about every single movie he makes. But we're not going to lie, Pinocchio has been one of his favorite projects for a long long time. Del Toro has even said that no art form has had a bigger impact on his life and work than animation, and no character in history has meant as much to him as Pinocchio. He clearly cares a lot about the project because he has kept fighting for its development even though it has been in development hell for years. Pinocchio is a great fit for Del Toro because a lot of the time he uses fantasy, he likes dark fairy tales, and he has a whimsical style. This is pretty obvious since Pinocchio and Frank Einstein were the two stories that most shaped his childhood and teen years. The reason why he's very attached to Pinocchio's story is also that he thinks it best shows his relationship with his own dad. The story has this idea that you are thrown into a world you don't know much about and have to figure it out as you go. There's no doubt that there are stories about the connection, bond, and shadows between a father and a son. Del Toro thought it would be a great way to talk about how precious and fragile humans are and how much we need each other. He really wanted to find a way to tell that story so that people would think they already knew it, but they actually don't. Let's look at why this movie uses stop motion. Pinocchio by Guillermo del Toro tells its story through stop motion animation, which according
according to him, is the best way to do it. It's not just the fact that this style of storytelling is fun for Del Toro, but he says that stop motion gives the movie a look and feel that are very different from many other Pinocchio movies. In a sneak peek behind the scenes, Guillermo Del Toro explains why he absolutely needs to use stop motion animation to tell his Pinocchio story. He says there's sort of a big difference between stop motion art and digital art. What he wants is for this movie to look and feel like it was consciously made by hand, you know, like a beautiful carving, painting, or a sculpting project by some artist. He also wanted the movie to have the sophisticated movement that they've learned about through the research on rigs and puppetry. What's more, how Guillermo del Toro's movie about Pinocchio will be different from Disney's. Both Disney's Pinocchio and Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio are based on the same story, but del Toro's version is very different from Disney's in a number of important ways. Some of the characters in del Toro's Pinocchio are very different from those in the Disney version. Jiminy Cricket is called Sebastian J. Cricket in del Toro's movie, and the Blue Fairy is now called the Wood Sprite, and looks much more like a mythical creature than she did in Disney's version. The Fox and the Cat and Mangiafuoco have been joined together to make Count Volpe a new villain. Del Toro has also added some new characters like the Podesta, the Don, and Sprezzatura, the Monkey. Compared to Disney's Pinocchio, Del Toro's version takes place in fascist Italy in the 1930s and is much darker. In the movie, the Podesta will turn Pinocchio into a soldier. This is likely meant to show how hard life was for people living under fascism, which is a lot similar to the themes in Del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth. Candlewick's bullying of Pinocchio will definitely be there. In Disney's version, Lampwick was only mentioned briefly as a bully. They're also changing up Geppetto's past in another dark way. The trailer shows that in Del Toro's version, Geppetto is a father who is sad about the death of his son, but this part of the story doesn't show up in Disney's 1940 version. It seems like Del Toro is adding another emotional layer to Geppetto's relationship with Pinocchio with his part. Up next, why Del Toro wants to make this movie his own. We think that what Del Toro wants is for this movie to be different from every other version of the story we've seen. This movie goes against the moral of the original story, which is that you have to change to be a real boy. This one is more about how to become a real boy. You have to stop acting and just be like a real person, full stop. Blind submission is not a good thing, and according to Del Toro, Pinocchio is good because he doesn't follow orders. He doesn't act like a puppet when everyone else does, and those are the things that are interesting. Del Toro basically wants to tell the story in his own way based on how he sees the world. In this version of the story, Pinocchio is made from the wood of a tree that grows on the grave of Geppetto's son. Geppetto wants another chance to be a dad, but what he gets isn't quite what he wants. Also, this story tries to be as true to life as it can be, and that's the reason why instead of Pleasure Island, the movie is set in a town by a fascist official. Apparently, Jimmy Cricket's story is about how he found love and learned to be humble, and Candlewick will start out as an enemy but turn out to be a friend eventually. In the end, the story says there may be many ways to lie, but the worst thing you can do is lie to yourself. And on that note, that's a wrap for this video. So what do you think about this newer version of Pinocchio? Are you excited to watch the movie? Let us know in the comments below. Also, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. We'll see you in the next one.